Douglas here. Um, so I'll get started. I'm Mike Peterson. Um, basically, I don't have a presentation or anything, but I think uh, resource utilization in space you know, along two lines uh, specifically would be in situ resource utilization. So that you've got a system, say, on Mars, and you're, I don't know, separating the water ice that you find into fuel, hydrogen, and oxygen. Yeah. But then also there'd be the, the second aspect of resource utilization is some sort of profitable uh, return of uh, either fuels or uh, like fuel components or um, actual materials, for building materials that you can bring back to low Earth orbit or Earth orbit or lunar orbit or something like that. So you'd have production facilities. So my intent for this pod is to talk about um, the uh, resources, how to get them, and then how to use them in space. Because microgravity manufacturing is going and processing is going to be very difficult to do. So um, yeah, feel free to. There aren't very many of us, so um, any comments right off the bat? Yeah. Um. <coughs> So I think that doing anything with, I would try to go by training. And I think doing anything that is, it has to do with, with solids is very, very difficult. Uh, it is very difficult to handle. You need to crush them, you need to, you know, conveyor belts. They, they don't want to behave. They don't behave always in the same way. And that's not even counting the fact that the lunar soil is extremely oh. abrasive and that it's also has a problem to deal with. Um, I think ice on Mars is a bit different because you can just melt it and something you can, can deal with easily. Yeah. Ice is probably the easiest thing to do. Well, the easiest is actually CO2 on Mars. Oh, right? sure. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, and you know, you can get out of CO2, you get your, your oxygen at least mm -hmm. with nothing else, with low, yeah. um, you know, need spray anything, just just spray it down and that's it. And I think that's the easiest way to go. Um, and then if you want to go further, yeah, you can have the water, obviously. CO2 plus water gives you methane. Fuel. Right, at that point you got, you got stuff you can't do, but you need a lot of energy for that, but mm -hmm. you need energy one way or the other. Yeah. So. But on the moon, I'm not too sure how easy it would be to do anything. Because again, you don't have that, you know, I mean, unless there's a very large concentration of water somewhere that you can just take that regolith and just heat it up, and you know, your water would just come out. The rest of it would just stay, you know, you just filter it somehow, have a liquid solid mixture, and you could just filter it. That would work, but otherwise, uh, one nice thing about the, the poles, oh, uh, one nice thing on the uh, about the poles on um, the moon is that basically they're always in, in the sunlight. You could uh, place a uh, solar collection up on a peak, so that it'd be always turned towards the sun. You have to put some actuator on it, so that it would uh, constantly point towards the sun. But then that would give you the energy to do continuous processing, so you wouldn't have to worry about the night and uh, losing power. It's, it's just very, very, if anybody wants to. Very pointy, you know. <laughs> it's probably the same level with the with or without. So we'll just yeah. Sure. It's really just for the camera. No, I yeah, I'm recording. Uh, like and, yeah, maybe I don't, right? <laughs> My name is John Smith. <laughs> um, I have no idea what I was going to say. But oh yes, the energy you could get from the sun. I don't know how value, how much it would be in terms of if it would be enough. You know, on, on the moon, just to move all that, to again move all that solid. That you need to move, and then you need, you know. Well, you could use. It's very bright out there. Question of time. Right? Well, I think it start up energy. So you could start it up to uh, to do some chemical separation, and then. Uh, Possibly burn it. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. That no, you probably wouldn't be able to do that because you're using the energy in order to generate the fuel in the first place. So it's more easily transported the the right. methane somewhere away. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, well, you can melt rock on Earth with a big Fresnel lens about the stall. Yeah. You can melt rock. It's way brighter on the moon. No atmosphere. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Instead you of can, using yeah, photovoltaics, you can melt rock. It's a lot of energy. Are they going to melt rock? Only a little spot, though. Right. But anyway, there's a lot of energy up there. When yeah. you have a differential between cold and hot, that's even perfect. Yeah. Then you can do sure. thermoelectrics and all kinds of things. Yeah. And some of the places up on the moon have never seen sunlight. It's just you know, like starlight. That was the, the atmosphere and all the radiation. There's, you know, one last loss component. Right. So what we consider normal processing. I mean, at the end of I thought that they density that you get from, you know, we get just from, from gasoline, right, is so much greater 
compared to, to the sun that... Well, converting it to electricity and then doing work is much more efficient. But if you can just use the heat for some process directly or the solar bombardment, mm -hmm. now, you're, CO2 now you're cooking at 100% or something. Just solar, solar, uh, yeah, the, the whole idea of the, for using the methane is that it's a long, but it, the whole idea for using the methane is that it's more easily burned somewhere else. You're basically using it to transport it. Methane is a whole lot more dense than hydrogen gas. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So it, it's not as efficient. Yeah, but the structure problems with hydrogen here. Exactly. It's only for the house in those situations. Yeah. So. It makes a available fuel cell, I believe. And then you talk about what you do with it afterwards. Yeah, there's right. got to be a reason why you're generating this material, or you're right. either yeah. using it as fuel, and that's probably the simplest option. But then, um, for what about uh, processing? You could, assuming that we have uh, people on Mars that want to settle, or they're actually, uh, in, instead of staying inside the capsules or whatever inflatable structures or anything, um, there are uh, several things about uh, using regolith to produce bricks and blocks, so that you can actually uh, either burrow tunnels, or you can build structures on the moon, and the regolith would form uh, a natural um, radiation barrier, which would be very useful, especially for long duration states. I mean, if we settle up there, we're going to need shielding. I think they want to liquefy rocks, basically, using exactly what I said, just turn them into like glass, and make these like glass igloos. There's, There's a lot of dirt. Yeah. There's a lot of silicon up there. Yeah. To should be able to manufacture these ones. So you make these kind of dirt tube, melted dirt glass tube things. Mm -hmm. Wasn't there something about a lava tube collapsed roof thing like that recently? Yeah. Was it on Mars though? I thought it was on Mars. There, there was, was a lava tube. Yeah, there was one of them. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it was a lava tube. I, I don't know how deep it was, but it was, it was pretty deep. It was pretty interesting to see. A lot of the things for lunar ice are either driven by, you know, a theoretical market for mm -hmm. human fusion in terms of forward looking plans, but I mean, you get water and stuff too, but it becomes an economic question is there's a matter of availability of human 3 that extends beyond just ISRU considerations versus, you know, the economics of bringing versus making there and uncertainty of costs. So and our fusion technology needs to advance before we Absolutely. Take That's why I said a theoretical yeah, yeah. Yeah. For, yeah. There's a fine number of potential resources. The Russian. So, I mean, as, as long as you're making something where you stay, like oxygen and water and bricks. Or fuel, generating fuel for the return trip on an exploration. Right. As long as you're living it with that, then you don't have the issue of, you know, somebody mentioned that we just talked about how even if there would be diamonds on the moon, it's there are diamonds on the moon, it would be too costly to bring back. Of course, that depends on what you want to do. You go there in the first place, but. If you use them there, they'd be handy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, anything you use over there makes makes more sense, but I guess at the same time that setting something back from the moon is not necessarily that expensive. It depends what, what you're using, if you're using fuel on the moon already. Well, uh, why not use uh, electromagnetic propulsion? So instead of using the fuel, you just use the electrical energy that's stored from solar collectors. And the big launching too. Yeah. Well, being the easier getter, I guess the hard part getting the moon is decelerating when you get there. That's apparently it takes less energy to go to Mars. Operating. And it does go to the moon. Yeah. The moon you just all that deceleration energy that you can't scam up the yeah. atmosphere. You, you can have, uh, if you make several passes through the atmosphere, yeah. 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 We say with the moon, you don't have the ability to. Right, yeah. Right. yeah. So, there is not, yeah. yeah. so I always right. wondered, because the moon has so little gravity, you know, what quasi atmosphere could you make that wouldn't evaporate into space? It would be like a heavy liquid. It would be like you'd rather be scuba diving on a liquid. a little gravity that if you thought you could make an air atmosphere, it would float away. Oh, yeah. So, uh, so you know, could you make like a liquid <laughs> atmosphere? Well, they have some like, you, that's uh, like a word word with a like the yeah, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, whether it has to be, a liquid metal would be kind of a bummer. Yeah. But whether some other non-toxic, uh, with water itself, you know, water itself would have been sublimated. Maybe something like Krypton or something like that. Uh, One of the noble gases. 
Those are all lagging now. Yeah. yeah. I don't know what do you, what do you do. What do you want to do with that? Set up an atmosphere on the moon so that you have air rating so it's cheaper. Oh, it wasn't for that. It was just to, you know, you'd be like, you live, either you have to live underground. Oh, okay. You, you have to live underground and you want to terraform it. And how can you terraform it with so little gravity? There'd be like, your atmosphere sure. would constantly escape. I don't think we'll ever have free atmosphere on the moon. Well, at least. And then I was kind of going, okay, what if it was just underwater? You know, would water stay? And you're sure. scuba diving, which would still be an advantage over, uh, you know, in a vacuum. Well, you could have um, it's a lot of water, but it's very much transparent blocks of some kind. I mean, if you're if you're building, building a, yeah, you, you build a the glass igloos like you were talking about. It, it's you have to build a structure. All right. Yeah. Sorry. So, so, so we just stick to yeah, so. like what's available now sure. yeah, on yeah, the yeah, next day. Yeah. I just didn't know the chemistry of you know what was heavy enough. So yeah. Right. Right. So just in terms of what's so what resources? I mean, I'm not familiar with lunar resources. So what is it that people, so they're talking about, you know, something immediate. Is there something immediate that people have that they're thinking could be done easily? Because it seems that there's some work that was done for Mars, but they were going to have a lunar lander on Mars in 2001 that was going to do so. And that, you know, when they crashed in 99, they kind of canceled one or something. Anyway, that's mm-hmm. pretty. But, but they had already something that was converted CO2 to oxygen. And it was just a little yeah. demonstration mission. But it's just to say the technology exists. Mm-hmm. Right. And it's, it was flight ready. Mm-hmm. It was tiny, but it was flight ready. <laughs> Is there something equivalent on the moon I don't that people that. have? Like anybody know anything about that's lunar really, lunar 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 let's say, hey, if we go two years. We're with Mars and asteroids. I read asteroids about lunar are cute. ISO proposal for yeah. free work meeting. And basically, any previous work that's been done, just looking at the history of publications prior to me getting involved. Yeah. Everything is justifying the work on the basis of anything. Oh. It's all all human. Because the economics don't make sense otherwise. Uh, I mean, it's right there. I mean, you know, Mars is, you know, way out in terms of the energy required to get on Earth, and it's a good point, actually, acceleration. But, you know, uh, why necessarily? Okay, the rock, I can see that. But why generate the water there? Sure. I mean, it's not really a high value activity. It's talked a lot about in these papers, but they're all piggybacked on the economics of that. Okay, let's yeah. let's uh, leave the moon alone uh, then. Uh, how about <laughs> some of the near Earth asteroids? They're a whole lot, e- I mean, some uh, require less energy to get to than the moon, and they have lower gravity wells, so it's easier to return from them. And uh, I mean, if necessary, you could possibly move them into more convenient orbit, um, but. Uh, because otherwise, uh, a lot of them you wouldn't necessarily be able to. The axis isn't as convenient as the moon, for example. It'd be potentially lower energy, but you'd only be able to stop by there once a year, so that it would be an extended trip. Or even if it's a very large orbit, orbit to be yeah, worth exactly. it. Like a one-time deal, maybe when it's coming our way, and sure, we've we'll got six months to do whatever you want to do, and then you. Mm-hmm. They seem to just be smaller moons, you know, after I just. Well, is it depends no, no. on the resource different? Is there some yes, the, the resources are different because they're, they're they're broken up. I mean, the moon is large enough that all the heavy metals, all the interesting stuff, uh, is down towards the center, or it's at least not at the surface. So at the surface, it's all just boring rock and uh, trace min- materials and stuff like that. But on uh, the asteroids, uh, especially carbonaceous asteroids, you have a, a lot of materials that are basically at the surface because uh, it's just one big chunk of coal exactly. or whatever it is. Or gold or yeah. something like that. Gold and acid. So Vesta, they just got mm-hmm. Dawn and stuff. What, what's there? I don't remember what type okay. of Vesta is. Um, Vesta is interesting because it's the second largest uh, there's series in the, in the yeah. Vesta for asteroids in the asteroid belt. And that's the reason why it was the most it's interesting. Really but I think um, one thing that could be done and uh, is look at some of the data from some of the uh, impacts from probes that have gone to different asteroids and they send a, a slug uh, into the surface and then you analyze the, the, the spectrograph of all of the materials that uh, are showing up because of that impact. Then you'd be able to see what the materials are um, underneath the surface. Well, what a, oh, go ahead. I was going to really change some subject pretty harshly. So, how many asteroids do we have we visited so far? Uh, uh, there's Je- 
70s did, did something, right? And how many were? Right, so and then we're years. planning on a, on a visit in a few years, like 2016 or something. And and we went on another one, Eros. One that crashed yeah. into or whatever. Yeah. Or I think we, we gently, right? Gently crashed yeah. into. Yeah. Maybe half dozen. So, uh, but none of them are really accessible. I mean, the only ones that would be really ex readily accessible would be anything that goes within the Earth orbit and, and your Earth, there you know, are essentially. Uh, the ones that are about to hit us are huge. Right. <laughs> is, is, there well, pretty is there enough of them? Is, is there water on them? Is there something uh, to do fuel? Probably frozen is water, not water ice. Um, um, Comet is the same thing, I'm guessing. Yeah. But they're in such rare orbits anyway. What value does it have? Well, uh, yeah. Well, it's just... But uh, I'm talking just near Earth objects. Yeah. Is, is there any of them that you could just... You know, if you see them coming, that you could use them as a as a fuel, deep, not a fuel depot, but a fuel to recharge your your walk. You know, this is a comet, for example. I'm saying is if you have, if you have an orbit that's so eccentric and out yeah. of line with what you want, the cost to bring any material from that orbit into a desirable orbit is extremely energetically costly. You just be wanting to just a ride on that asteroid to go some other super yeah, weird place like to put your but robot someplace that you don't want to spend. But you need to get to that orbit in the first place. That's actually a great idea. Well, yeah. no, no, you, you need to get to that orbit in the first right. place in order to, to do that. Unless you have yeah, that's true. Exactly. You've got to exactly. <laughs> match orbits, yeah. otherwise you're going to smack into it. But, but would there be enough of them that you could, in, in enough orbits, that you could say, you know, every I don't know, every year on average, for example, you got one that's coming close enough that you could go to it, recharge, fuel, oxygen, water, whatever, and then keep on going further. Well, then it depends on what you want to do. If you want to generate the materials while you're already there, or send something beforehand to uh, build a fuel depot for when you arrive. I'm thinking like fuel, yeah. yeah you have some sort of rock-powered so robot that would just go around eating rock. I was thinking I would just get well, there. And yeah, that's a good thing. So, so say you have the comets and you were collecting, say, water or whatever, right? right? Mm -hmm. say water, yeah. What if you picked ones that were making close passes to Jupiter every time it went by? You plan the mission so that you send your probe out, catches up, does its thing, yeah. fills up the tank, and sure. then on its pass with Jupiter, it does an orbital insertion into there, puts it into orbit, and Sure. Right. So the water. Yeah, right. so we can just have a very convenient. We just have, but yeah, you have to, you have to yeah. do an analysis of all the different water scavenging, hydrogen engine propulsion. Yeah, and then you just drop it in. You have a depot out there. I mean, that's that seems. Sure. Yeah. Although ion seems drives, like something of discussion. That's ion place. drives maybe make that kind of not worth the trouble because you can just get some a bunch of electricity and some inner stuff to shoot out of your ion drive. Pretty much not. I mean, still. Uh, the would still be fuel, so you'd have to pick that up from somewhere. Well, I mean, it's, elect it's electrically fueled, and then shoots out some inner gas that you store as propellant, which it does nothing to it. So anything that you could spit out at, you know, near the speed of light or whatever, an ion drive shoots out each molecule incredibly fast, mm -hmm. and therefore it shoots out almost nothing. You know, if you could just scam some almost nothing around you and shoot sure. it out with energy, you wouldn't necessarily. I think there's care. all kind of that proves the point. The whole thing's about energy, no matter what. Yeah. yeah. So we're talking about sort of, even what we're talking about is just feedstocks to produce fuel, we're not even talking about energy. Yeah. You know, if you have water, I mean, realistically, you don't need to drink very much because you're going to be recycling anyway. Yeah. Um, it's, you want the hydrogen. So you yeah, want the water. Because you want it, it has the ability to store potential. Yeah. yeah. So and you take energy to break the water up to turn it back yeah. into fuel. If you had that much energy, you could have an ion drive. Yeah, it's, it's mostly about the transportation and the energy. Yeah, because even if even like any resource you want, say it's bricks, yeah. if, if energy was cheap enough, I could bring bricks from here. We've got sure. we've got more. Yeah, yeah. But it's the only reason we want to do it there is this energetic consideration. So um, that would help out with that. Well, there are survival issues, but then uh, that would bring up Venus, which is a subject changing one. Oh, go for it. Oh, for going to Venus. Venus. I mean, it has it has an atmosphere, no matter how nasty it is. Yeah. It has gravity like Earth. That's one where you kind of go, you know, you're the first one to sneak some germ in there, you know, without permission. So that like wreak havoc on their ecology, <laughs> converted to something. I don't know that much about it, but I could see a lot of money or something. I forgot what it was. Sulfur, sulfur, sulfur acid, yeah. Acid, yeah. yeah. But there's all the nasty. And that pressure is just through the roof, right? The what? The yeah. pressure is through the roof. Right. I think it's pretty high, yeah. yeah. Runway green. But there's no bacteria, there's nothing. Right, but I mean, there's definitely, you know, yeah. <laughs> go get some bacteria from the bottom of the ocean and just send it over there and let it start Let's working. See what happens. Yeah, or, you know, it'd be nice to have a plan. But, uh, <laughs> but uh, it is, you know, 
least it comes with some chemicals that you can work with in the atmosphere. I mean, it's too much pressure, but that's one where you can, it's like, it seems like a terraforming opportunity. Um, sure, but that, that's really long term. I, I guess what, what I'm really looking for is uh, sources that uh, can make the exploitation of resources in space economically viable. So in combination with uh, government funding oh, and yeah, that sort yeah, of thing, yeah. uh, try to have something that you, you have uh, refueling depots and uh, other materials. Are there any materials out there that are rare enough on Earth but are easily accessible or more easily accessible on asteroids that would make it economically viable to harvest it, assuming that all the processes were in, in uh, place to purify them and then bring them back? Wow, and there I are a lot of different ways to I guess you count on H3 and solar energy and I don't know what else. Or if you find an asteroid that has 3% uranium in it. Okay. <laughs> right, well, what, what are some of the, uh, the, the, the critically uh, sparse elements that we have? All the rare earth. Okay. Um, actually, those are just dispersed. They're, well, rare they're not actually rare. rare. Yeah. Yeah, like uh, you can filter seawater long, long enough, you can get everything. Yeah. Just, you know, how much seawater you want. Just how much energy do you want to put into recovery? Yeah. Energy. Well, we're having trouble. They're going to tell you there's the, the money's this their price is going through the roof and oh the rare earths yeah that's just the some thing. of the stuff that goes up here to very small amounts right yeah but you, I mean the rare earths are there I'm just you want to well, you still you have a mine production you know, where's labor cheap okay. not here there's not a whole lot of them well we used to know there is it's just because they're shut down it was like why bother losing money operating when yeah. the Chinese are doing it cheaper yeah and then we, we have like hey the Chinese are like people yeah. making it you know it was like <laughs> Then what other materials? I guess we're, we're getting close to the, the end, so I just wanted to focus on the materials. Do you guys know of any other materials that would be expensive like enough to be worth coming, bringing back? Potentially. Uh, assuming, or what are some things that are just... Uh, we really wish we had more of. Yeah. yeah, what would we wish we had more of? Because, I mean, there are a lot of different methods. Uh, running out of helium for blimps. Okay, uh, helium. But it's true that helium on Earth is. That's true. Is true blunts. But then again, it's I mean, all it's in the upper atmosphere, presumably yeah, floating yeah. around. Well, we do we really need it that much? Yeah, we do for energy. Just so many power plants use helium cooling for things, and I mean it's. Oh yeah. There's very critical. Uh, yeah. You know, large hydrogen collider uses helium to power its, uh, its coils, and, or not power, but to enable the superconductivity of its coils. Uh -huh. I mean, there's things like that, but like, stuff, if yeah. you run out, there are things that you just cannot do. Yeah. Wow. So, and liquid uh, helium is pretty crazy. The sun has got a lot of it. Yeah. <laughs> yes. It's a good point. Yeah. It's not a lot. Oh, uh, there's some of these suborbital craft you know, like grab conglomerates. Cool. I don't, I don't know where there's materials. a lot. Uh, aside from helium, I don't know. I'm a materials engineer, so from a perspective of, gosh, I wish we had this, I wish we had that. Most of the things that are rare and very expensive are fairly underutilized because of that, but okay. a lot of them don't have like very, very high value return things where you say, gosh, I wish we had more of an you know? It's, there's not really a lot of those things. Most of the, where materials are really gonna bring you value is that it gives you some other you know, function that you can bring back with this energy thing. Okay. You know, like we have some things that can enable that. I mean, talk about rare risk being not rare, but not is because More they're- difficult to get to. Yeah, and so if you take a, a slab of granite, and it has all those things in it. But what's the energy requirements to get out? That's the question, because they're all right here, right underneath us. We could dig a hole right now and get them. But the, the, the price of those materials wouldn't be anywhere near market cost. Mm -hmm. Is, price, is so the concentration then, decent thing? Yeah. Is, well, it, is, is very low again, so it's, well, it ties to cost. It's like, uh, it cost, always energy, it's, cost, it's, it's always yeah, energy. Yeah, it's, it's, the, it's the cost of recovery, and that is driven is, by the cost is, of Is there stuff that, like you said, you know, you just joked about vanadium, but is there something that somebody out there said, I've got the greatest invention in the world, if only I had. Like lithium crystals. <laughs> you know, but, um, but I guess people don't really think that way. I mean, unless somebody. Do. That's what that's, you know, I'm a terrible engineer, that's yeah. what you do, kind of. Is yttrium hot? Yeah, but I mean, there's no, no one's saying, like, gosh, we need more. It's, yeah. The, the price is X, and it works out okay. Yeah. Well, the price more, I more. Still, The question yeah. is, if more was made available, is there, would there, there be a market for it? More enabling no, applications. I'm sure, I'm sure there are situations where if you were to slide something down from, you know, $100 down to, you know, a dollar, there would be different applications. But, but that's probably not what we're going to get for that story. No, yeah, we're not going to get those price classes. Yeah. yeah, it will depends upon uh, 
what sort of asteroid? Because there are a lot of different asteroids, and there are, there are a lot of different components for those asteroids, and the materials will be close to the surface. You really have to do a comprehensive survey of all of the near Earth asteroids, for example. And that would uh, one thing that would be ideal for that most likely would be a, a solar sail uh, type or ion. Uh, solar sails, yeah, and other you know, scanning mm -hmm. available energy. Actually, another thing that comes to mind is um, there are sort of Earth. There's asteroids that are in Earth's orbit. That are before or after us. That are yeah, the drones. Yeah, drones. Oh, yes. Yep. They would be good candidates um, yep. if you could somehow. I mean, in they terms of discovered the first in terms one. of yeah, in terms of I know they can identify a whole lot more, but they're hard. Yeah, they are. Really Anytime that you want to look at them, they're in day daytime yeah. by the map. The sun's right there. there. Yeah, exactly. So um, those kind of things would actually be. They're already in our orbit, so energetically they're not very costly to, to right. recover. Um, you'd have to find some strategy to get them. Back or forward to our position. Yeah. Maybe that's. I mean, if, if you're talking about bringing things back, that would be the first class of asteroids that yeah. you have to like. Yeah. What was the term for those things? Trojans. The Trojan asteroids. Trojan asteroids. Mm -hmm. Like it stays, you know, a quarter of a. Sure. Let's say it's 15 degrees ahead or whatever. Yeah, yeah. 120 degrees. Do they have 60. to be stable, kind of. I, I think it's 60 degrees ahead and behind. Um, no matter where you are. So they have to be in like, like, it's like a Lagrange point. Yeah, it's the L4 and L5 points. Oh, are they? Okay. Yeah. Oh, oh, they're just hanging there. They're just hanging there because those points are sufficiently there. big enough. There's crap like Sargasso C floating around there. Yeah, basically. Um, the uh, and you know basically then um, yeah. I think everybody's going to want to see uh, Dave Maston's right. But, um, yeah, there are several uh, several large collections of asteroids, especially around Jupiter. Uh, the Trojan orbits. So the L4 and L5 points of Jupiter. Oh, there's 